Hi, it's Katrina. From mysterious dolls found in a cave to an unidentified creature hovering over a cemetery, here are nine of the creepiest discoveries. Number 9. Burke and Hare Murder Dolls In 1836, a group of boys searching for rabbits in Scotland found a collection of 17 strange dolls in miniature coffins packed into a small cave in a hillside. Each creepy doll lay peacefully in its own coffin. But where did these dolls come from? Who made them, and why were they here hidden in the hillside? At first, people assumed that the dolls were related to witchcraft or were simply toys. During the 19th century, Edinburgh, Scotland was a leading center of anatomical study, but the skyrocketing demand for cadavers led to a shortage, and two men named William Burke and William Hare saw this as an opportunity to profit from death. Over a 10-month period in 1828, the pair sold 17 corpses to Robert Knox, an anatomist who dissected the bodies during his lectures. The first body belonged to a lodging tenant who passed away from edema. Once Hare and Burke realized how much money they could make per body, they murdered 16 people and split the profits. After they got caught, Hare received immunity for his testimony and was released from prison. Burke, on the other hand, was hanged for his crimes the following year. People began to believe that the dolls represented Burke and Hare's victims. It looks like whoever made them came back several times over the years. Some had varying levels of decay, indicating that they were more exposed to weathering than others. All the dolls had their eyes open, and they all had black feet. The coffins were built first, and then the dolls were forced to fit into them, with some even having the arms removed in order to fit. Modern scientists attempted to determine if one of the killers created the dolls through DNA testing, which proved inconclusive. But it is generally accepted that the dolls have something to do with the murders with one theory suggesting that Burke had created them to assuage his guilty conscience. Eight of the dolls survive today and are on display at the National Museum of Scotland. Number 8. Skin Book The Boston Athenaeum is one of the oldest libraries in the United States. Included among its collection of around 150,000 rare books is the handwritten memoir of a career criminal bound in his own skin. Born in 1809 under the given name James Allen, the character in question, who went by the alias George Walton, embarked on a life of crime starting at age 15 and became a career burglar. He spent his entire adult life in and out of prison and died from tuberculosis while behind bars in Charlestown, Massachusetts. Leading up to his death, Allen had a prison guard write down his life story and requested that two copies of the book be bound in his flesh. After he died, skin was removed from Allen's back, treated to look like gray deer skin, and sent to a bookbinder. One copy went to Allen's doctor, and the other went to John Fenno Jr., who, according to author Stephen Z. Nonak, was the only one of Allen's victims who ever stood up to him. Printed on its cover is the Latin phrase, Hic liber Waltonis cute compactus est, which translates to, This book was bound in Walton's skin. It's unknown how the Athenaeum acquired the book, but it's believed that John Fenno Jr.'s daughter donated it sometime during the 19th century. The practice of binding books with human skin, known as anthropodermic bibliopegy, may have started during the French Revolution. It was most popular among physicians who wrote medical texts. Would you read a book made from human skin? Let me know in the comments below. Number 7. Schoolhouse Dungeon Located at 14 St. George Street near the city gate of St. Augustine, Florida, the oldest wooden schoolhouse is one of the oldest wooden schools in the United States. The one-room structure was originally a home that became a schoolhouse in 1716, according to tax records. Nobody knows exactly when it was built. It has a second floor where the live-in schoolmaster slept, as well as an outhouse and a detached kitchen. Students who misbehaved were sent to a small space beneath the stairs nicknamed the dungeon. In reality, it was most likely just a place for rambunctious children to regain their composure, but it serves as a sobering reminder of how vastly the education system has changed over the centuries. Today, the schoolhouse is a museum that remains mostly unchanged from the way it was hundreds of years ago. Visitors can see the dungeon for themselves, which contains the barefoot doll of a little boy sitting next to a pile of wood and holding a misspelled sign that says, I am innocent. At the doll's feet is another sign that says, unruly students were placed here for punishment. Please do not touch the unruly student. He bites. Creepy, right? As medieval as sending a young child to a punishment dungeon sounds, the school is progressive in some ways. In 1788, it became the first schoolhouse in the United States to hold co-ed classes. Number 6. 
cannibalistic crew. In 1845, two ships called the HMS Terror and the HMS Erebus set sail for the Canadian Arctic in a quest to discover the Northwest Passage, a sea route connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans via the Arctic Ocean. Under the leadership of British Royal Navy officer and explorer Sir John Franklin, the expedition became trapped in ice, and all 129 crew members died after abandoning the ship. Their remains were discovered bit by bit over the next century and a half. Many of the bones contained cut marks, lending credibility to Inuit rumors that the perilously stranded men resorted to cannibalism in a desperate bid to survive. A 2016 study describes evidence of pot polishing, which happens when the ends of bones rub together in a pot of boiling water. Author Simon Mays and Owen Beatty pointed out that this was usually done at the end stages of cannibalism to extract marrow from the bones. This aligns with eyewitness reports from Inuits, who describe seeing piles of bones with cut marks in them that were characteristic of marrow extraction. Naturally, the mere thought of eating another human being is unspeakably disturbing to most people, but the decision to do so speaks to the level of desperation the men were experiencing, according to bioarchaeologist Anne Keenley's side, who spoke with Live Science. She posed the difficult question, you have to imagine yourself in that situation, what would you do? And while it's difficult to imagine, the plain and simple truth is that as humans, we don't know what lengths we'd go to to survive until we are put to that test. What do you think? What would you do? Let me know in the comments below. Number 5. Wilson Castle Built in 1867 by a physician named John Johnson, a magnificent castle and its 18 outbuildings sit on a sprawling 115-acre parcel of land nestled in the heart of Vermont's Green Mountains. The beautiful three-story home contains 32 spacious rooms, 13 fireplaces, 84 stained glass windows, two turrets, and a balcony. Dr. Johnson and his wife only enjoyed the mansion for a short time before he could no longer afford the taxes and it was repossessed. The property went through four owners between the 1880s and 1939, when AM radio pioneer Herbert Lee Wilson bought it. Now named Wilson Castle, it has been the family's home for five generations. Part of the home is maintained by the Wilson Foundation, Inc., and is open to the public for tours. Situated in a remote area, the house appears seemingly out of nowhere and somewhat out of place. It only became a tourist attraction in recent years, with most people simply regarding it as an insignificant oddity, given its lack of famous residents over the years, according to Andy Probst, a friend of the Wilson family who spoke with the news. But its eerie overtones have attracted the curiosities of those interested in the paranormal, who suspect that the Wilson Castle may be haunted. People that have gone reported footsteps and a creepy vibe, but ghost hunters have not found anyone that has died in the house. Yet. Number 4. Gerbil Tooth Headdress Discovered in 2018, the Lothagam North Pillar site is a 5,000-year-old burial site in Kenya. It's situated in a sprawling field and consists of burial mounds and pillars that took anywhere from 450 to 900 years to build. At the center of the site is a stone platform measuring 100 feet in diameter that contains a burial chamber that may have once held the remains of up to 580 people. The seemingly uneventful 15,000-square-foot site is not dedicated to royals or elites, but instead contains the graves of ordinary tribe members of all ages and genders, who were indiscriminately laid to rest side by side. Nobody was given preferential treatment, and most bodies were adorned with colorful jewelry. Included among these discoveries is a headdress made of 405 gerbil teeth that came from 100 individual gerbils. Because gerbils were not domesticated yet, this means that whoever created the headdress had to go through the painstaking process of trapping the animals. Built at a time when decreased rainfall caused shorelines to retreat, the graveyard represents a shift in cultural expression that went along with the environmental changes that were going on, according to researchers. A fresh look at the Lothagam North Pillar site is offering experts fresh insight into the emergence of complex societies and the new social rituals that came along with it, including monuments to the dead. Number 3. Neanderthal Cannibals As the Neanderthals approached the end of their existence around 40,000 years ago, a group of our ancient cousins feasted on six members of the same species in a cave in the Ardennes Forest in Goyette, Belgium. The victims consisted of a newborn, a young child, and four adults or teenagers. According to a 2016 study, their remains bear cut marks, pits, and notches, suggesting that they were deliberately butchered and that their killers made tools from their bones. By all appearances, the butcher 
poachers were thorough in skinning and cutting up their victims and in extracting their bone marrow. Archaeologist Christian Casellas described the evidence of cannibalism as irrefutable. These findings build on previous evidence of Neanderthal cannibalism found in Spain and France. First occupied during the Paleolithic era, the caves at Goyette were first explored during the 19th century by geologist and paleontologist Edward Dupont, who collected a large collection of bones and tools. But his published findings went largely unnoticed until 2004, when Patrick Simal, the head of anthropology at the Brussels Institute of Natural Sciences, noticed a Neanderthal jawbone in Dupont's collection that had been mistaken for an animal bone. This prompted further exploration of the site, which proved the sneaking suspicion that Neanderthals not only lived and ate there, but that they sometimes preyed on their own species. The Neanderthals' known history of cannibalism dates back to 120,000 years ago, when climate change eradicated many of the animals they relied on for food. Evidence found in France shows a distinct change from eating large mammals like bison and reindeer to smaller creatures like snakes and rodents, as well as other Neanderthals. This shows that food was running out and that the Neanderthals were eating merely to survive. But this does not explain every instance of Neanderthal cannibalism, and scientists are still working to untangle the mysteries behind why these early humans decided to eat each other. Number 2. Highgate Cemetery In response to a growing demand for centrally located land to develop and concerns over the spread of disease, the city of London created its first municipal cemetery, known as the Magnificent Seven during the 1830s. One of them, called Highgate Cemetery, has a reputation for being the city's creepiest graveyard. The site was a popular burial ground for some time. Around 170,000 people were buried here, including Karl Marx, sci-fi author Douglas Adams, and famous criminal Adam Worth, who is thought to have inspired the character Professor Moriarty, Sherlock Holmes's nemesis. But Highgate's popularity waned over time, and by the end of World War II, the cemetery was overgrown and in disrepair. During the 1970s, filmmakers used the site as a shooting location for horror films, sparking a renewed public interest in the property. Soon enough, tales of grave robbers, vampires, and destruction at Highgate began appearing in news headlines. This time period, known as the Highgate Vampire Sensation, came with rumors that visitors witnessed an unidentified creature hovering over the graves, according to a book titled Beyond the Grave, which claims that vampire hunters flock to the site to break open tombs and mutilate bodies. A neighbor who lived next door to the cemetery reportedly claimed that they discovered a headless body behind the wheel of a parked car one morning. The urban legends surrounding Highgate became so problematic police had to lock and guard the graveyard, and it didn't stop vampire hunters from scaling the walls and gates to get inside. Things have quieted down since then, and the site is now overseen by staff and mostly limited to guided tours. But the cemetery remains as creepy as ever, and photography is extremely restricted, making one wonder what they might see there that they're not allowed to capture with their video camera. Number 1. Coffin Birth and Brain Surgery Around 1,300 years ago, a pregnant woman died weeks before she was due to have her baby in the medieval town of Imola, Italy. Archaeologists found her buried with a hole in her skull and a collection of small bones beneath her pelvis. In a phenomenon known as a coffin birth, posthumous gases had pushed the corpse out of the woman's body. Discoveries like this are incredibly rare in archaeology. A 2018 study examining the remains determined that the hole in her skull was likely from trepanation, a primitive brain surgery technique that involved drilling into a patient's head to release the pressure. It was used to treat numerous ailments that caused brain swelling, but apparently did little to help the woman. The researchers wrote that they believe she experienced one of two high blood pressure conditions that can happen during pregnancy, known as preeclampsia and eclampsia. In a last-ditch effort to save her life, her caretakers performed trepanation, but their efforts were unfortunately in vain. Experts can admittedly only speculate about the reasons for the brain surgery, since this discovery is unique in terms of the time and place it occurred. While signs of trepanation have been found in some 1,500 skulls dating back to the Neolithic period, this is a first for a medieval burial in Italy. Because of how precise the hole is, it was unlikely caused by violence, according to the study. Signs of healing indicate that the procedure was done at least a week before she died. Discovered in 2010, the remains date back to sometime during the 7th or 8th centuries, known as the Lombard period. She died in her 20s or 30s and was near full term in her pregnancy at 38 weeks. Thanks for watching! Hope this wasn't too creepy for you! What listing did you think was the strangest? Let me know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already! See you next time! Bye!